Hello ladies and gentlemen, Teveron here and welcome back to Danganronpa, where we are in the midst of an investigation involving the deaths of both Hifumi and Taka, and things are getting more and more interesting. We are very suspicious of Celeste because of her placement and actions throughout the course of this case thus far, but we're still not certain that she actually is involved. There is almost certainly an accomplice or two people involved, maybe even the mysterious 16th student who we have yet to discover. Who knows? And we still have not relocated Kyoko or seen Hifumi for the first time today. So there is that. Yes, please. Hmm. Hello? So, this is where you were. I've been looking for you. Well, I wasn't looking for you, but since you're here, what do you want? You have? Hmm. I wanted to thank you for what you did. Are you going to let us know what you conjectured in your mind? Not that you meant to, but you ended up making this little game of ours very interesting indeed. Well, hopefully you will not make it further interesting by muddying the waters again. Um... You should go to Hero's room. In the dorms? Can we go there now? Because we weren't allowed to look at the map before, which in general in this game means we can't go there. Oh, and let me give you this. Meet in the dining hall? What is this? This is the note Hero wrote to get us all to meet up, right? Oh yeah, this morning. Was it this morning? Or when was that? I'm not sure. All the stuff is getting jumbled in my head. I can only keep so many things straight and I didn't think that this was actually part of the investigation, so. Hmm. You remember well. Well, better than me in this instance. Well, the penmanship was pretty remarkable, so it left an impression. It's all clear now. Anyway, this makes it clear, right? Mm, clear as mud. This is a trap. Okay. What is? <laughs> <laughs> Things grow ever more exciting. Um, what are you talking about? I've already repaid my debt. I don't owe you any more explanation. Well, it would be very nice if you would give it anyway. Goodbye. Or not. Goodbye. Yasuhiro's message has been added to the Truth Bullets section. I don't understand, but perhaps it will co become clear when we go to Hero's room? What's waiting for me there? Hmm. Can we look at the map now? Will his room be marked? Well, the nurse's office still has an exclamation on it. Does that mean that the repository and the um, equipment room also still have exclamation marks? Well, here's the dorm, that's for sure. Hero's room has an exclamation now. Okay, the equipment room still does. The repository does not. Of course, I don't think it did before. So there may actually still be stuff to find out in these exclamation marked rooms. That is interesting. Well, let's slow travel just in case we run into anyone along the way. Hmm. All right, no one thus far. Will there be others at Hiro's room? sure nobody's lurking in these corners as they are wont to do. Still locked off. A hero's room was... This Leon Yasuhiro. The door is unlocked? That is very suspicious. I guess I can go inside. Biakia did say to go look. It might not be a great idea, but I'm going to take the plunge. What awaits us? 
This is very hero, that's for sure. This is hero's room. There's all kinds of weird stuff in here. Yes, tarot cards, other occult paraphernalia. Looks like reflexology. Looks like a reflexology chart. The little hand over there and things like that. Or maybe that's a palm reading guide. Where'd he even get it all from? More importantly, he still has it turned up. Which means he can't really complain if I don't get his permission to search his room, right? It's kind of sophistry, but I'm going to go with it too. Uh, hopefully he is not dead as well. Alright. A surveillance camera. Okay. Okay was hoping for some mono coins. The door to the bathroom. I soundlessly checked the bathroom. There's nothing in here. It's pretty grungy, though. How does a bathroom even get this dirty? I don't want to know. I do not want to know. Nope. No mono coins. So I'll disappoint. Okay, so we can't look at the reflexology slash palm reading thing. Don't want to leave. There's boxes here? I'll get to those in a second. Let's look at everything that's familiar first. It's a normal bed. Pretty much just like the one in my room. Alright. Looks like the boxes are what we're here for? I think there's something in the cardboard box. Okay. This looks like schematics for Robo-Justice. Hmm, it's blueprints for something and... Some things made out of... It looks like cardboard, plastic, and plaster? Is this Robo-Justice? That's what it looked like. So is Hero involved? And it's in Hero's room. Oh, wait. These blueprints... Something about them bothers me. Yeah, that's not Hero's handwriting. His handwriting was very meticulous and beautiful. This is more like my handwriting. So... Did he get the plans from someone else, or are these a plant to make him look guilty? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. That looks like all there is in here. I am very, very interested to see what the deal is with these blueprints, whether they're a frame job or not. It's definitely not his handwriting. Ah. Hello, Owie. Ah, Makoto, big news, big news. What's wrong? We found Kyoko. Okay, where is she? What? Is she alive? Is she okay? Where is she? Wait, I wasn't done. There's more big news. Just a second. Robo Justice showed up too. So finally, someone besides Celeste saw Robo Justice, or is it just her claiming to have seen him again? Robo Justice? Hmm. It's Hero wearing the costume. Well, that doesn't speak very well for Hero, though we do have these non-hero handwriting blueprints. So I don't know how this is going to shake out. Okay. Anyway, as soon as you can, head to the pool on the second floor. Will do. To think Hero and Kyoko would turn up at the same time, it is a little weird. Anyway, I have to head to the pool. Are you going to teleport me? I would appreciate it in this instance. I ran off to the second floor as fast as I could. Thank you this time. Alright, uh, well, most of the gang's here. I don't see Sakura or Toko. And I guess Robo Justice is hero? Hello, Kyoko. Where have you been? Kyoko and... I mean... I guess it is hero. <laughs> man. I have had the worst day. Stark surprise from me. Sorry for the speechlessness. 
hero? Okay then, um, Kyoko, perhaps you can help sort this out. Right. I found Hero. Who found you? Or where, are you, where were you off to? He was jammed into the pool room locker. Damn it, Makoto, I tried to get you to look in that locker. Unless he just wasn't there at the time. Could have been, I guess. It looked like he was fast asleep. So I kicked him and woke him up. Don't be mean. I still can't believe you kicked me. Listen, dude. You got some splaining to do. You could have been a little more gentle about it. Like, I don't know, caress my face or something. How's she supposed to do that through your robot mask? What? That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden, without a trace. Well... There was something I had to check up on, and that was? What do you mean? Never mind. <sighs> I can't never mind. It's nothing. Never mind. Okay. Hey. More importantly, she says that, but does she have any idea? How suspicious it makes her look? I don't know. Does she know people think she might be spying for the mastermind? I don't know if she knows or cares or if she actually is spying. And? First of all, Hero, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like that. I mean... Oh, uh, well, I mean, I have no idea. Really? One second I was asleep, didn't even know how that happened. Then I woke up and then I was here. Okay. Hmm. I don't care. Do something about that costume. It pains me just to look at you. Huh? Well, um... Let me out of here! I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help? <laughs> Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? It's a good point, Celeste. You got it all wrong! Kind of lends to the idea that it wasn't him? I wonder if he was drugged. I didn't make the stupid friggin' thing. It would seem... There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We really don't have a choice. Let's help him. Okay? It took everyone's help, but slowly, we were able to get Hero out of the suit. It took a few minutes, but eventually we got all the pieces off. <laughs> Whoa, free at last. Hmm. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits Hero? Well, I mean, it seems to have been made for him. Though if it wasn't him who designed it, as is evidenced by the blueprints, how did they get his exact measurements? Hmm. So then... More to the point, nobody but Hiro would be able to wear that costume. Uh, um... Wait, what? H hold on a second. Honestly... Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints were in your room as well. So you know about those too? Did you tell everyone, Biakia? Is that okay? In other words... It is obvious to everyone that you made this costume. <laughs> That's true. I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Could it be... Then it's obvious. The one who put this costume on and went around attacking everyone... That's terrible! ...was Hero. <sighs> Shall we tie him up and gag him? Just the worst. Good idea. We wouldn't want him killing anyone else. What? what? Tie me up? No, hold on just a second. There's a lot of weird stuff going on here, guys. Oh, hold on, guys. I think that's going a little far. That's right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Thank you, Kyoko. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... Uh, um... Attacking? Blueprint? 
I have no idea what you guys are talking about. What the heck? You can't talk your way out of this. It's been decided. You killed them. Well, I mean, we can't just decide. We have to find out for sure. Please. What? Killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero running around. What are you saying? I guess that is another possibility that there's two of these costumes. You're the only one who can wear this costume. So who else could possibly be the costumed attacker? What the heck? How do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on for yourself before you convict me. Okay. Fine. If you're going to be a jerk about it, I will. Without missing a beat. I think that's supposed to be beat, not bit. Anyway, Hina started putting on the Robo Justice costume. Huh. See, look. See how loose it is? Okay. I mean, point made. I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. Okay. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. Hmm. That's not a very nice thing to say. Well, if you didn't make it as you claimed, then why do you care? Mm hmm. I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Okay. Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? Well, we know it doesn't fit you. That doesn't mean that Hero is the only one it fits or that there's not another Robo Justice costume. I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. In, in a huff, Hina took the suit back off again. Well, now you're all out of excuses. Uh, um... No, see? It's because you're a girl. If it was another guy, then... <laughs> Makoto, go ahead. Uh, okay. Against my will, I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried putting them on. Is there anyone that is of a similar height to Hero here? Can we check that? Uh, report cards? Yeah. Let's see, Yasahiro. Okay, he is six feet tall. Well, Sakura is a lot more beefy than he is and four inches taller. Yeah, there's no way Makoto's doing it. He's way shorter than Hiro. Yakia might be able to fit in there. He's six foot one and 150 pounds. Yeah. I think that Byakia could maybe fit in the same costume as Hero. Good to note. Anyway, let's continue, shall we? It's no good. The arms are too long. There's no way I can wear this. Just a second. See, I told you it was impossible. <laughs> you are absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hero's body exactly. But then there's another costume. They must have one that looks the same, but, but fits them. Honestly. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. What the heck? Evidence? You claim there is another suit, yes? Then you must find it and show it to us. What the heck? Just the worst. Who cares? Hero's the only one without an alibi during this whole thing anyway. Well, no, Kyoko doesn't have an alibi during much of it. That's terrible. Which is how we know it was him. Wh what? I mean, is that really true? I have no idea what's been happening. Could someone, like, tell me? Okay. Hmm. Um, let's talk. Oh. I certainly did not expect Hiro and Kyoko to turn up at the same time. Hmm. But where has Kyoko been hiding all this time? I would like to know that myself. I have no idea. 
Then perhaps... Perhaps she really is working for the mastermind. What else would explain her questionable behavior? I don't know, but that is a heck of a conclusion to jump to. But... <laughs> you are quite protective of her, yes? That's because she's helped me out so much up until now. <laughs> if I were the mastermind, that is exactly what I would do to earn your trust. Okay. Yes. Okay. Nothing really going on there then. And you? Hm. Hm. It's looking more and more like it really was a setup. You think so? Uh, okay. Glad to see that you think it may have been as well. We'll talk to Kyoko last, I think. What the heck? There's no talking your way out of this one. You did it. Everyone knows it. Or are you talking about the note saying meet in the dining room? What the heck? Um, if you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand? I think I figured out that someone's been killed, right? Hey, Makoto, who was it? It's two someones, actually. Well, two people... Two people were killed. Taka and Hifumi. What? 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 Two people? Just the worst. Why are you freaking out? You did it. Aoi, we need to stay calm and not jump to conclusions. I'm pretty sure that we're not through with all this yet. Please? I did not. Huh? Wait, hold on. If those two are the ones that were killed... How about that? That's it. I know who did it. Okay. So then... You may as well tell us then. Hmm. Taka and Hifumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? Are you going to say they killed each other? Because I don't think that that's the case. I'm at least 30% right. Okay, that's even stupider than I than I thought you were going to be. Which means Alter Ego and or Chihiro must have done it. Correct. I see. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Please. Huh? Uh, unfortunate. What the heck? Stop trying to trick us. Just admit that you did it, okay? Uh, um... I I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. Oh, so then. Oh, I, I know, that note. The note that Byakia gave me? About meeting up in the dining hall? Note? Uh, um... Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. But the last thing I remember is going to the rec room. Then, for some reason, I fell asleep. Hmm. Hey. The real killer probably drugged me or something. Perhaps? Do you have the notes so that we can see the handwriting? Just the worst. Not a chance. So... No. Hold on. He could be onto something. The nurse's office did have chemicals that could do that. Huh? Well, really? <sighs> I told you, someone's trying to set me up. A secret passage, a chance to escape. Someone wrote all that to trick me. The note, please. I would like to see if the handwriting is the same as on the blueprints. <sighs> Even if that's true, you must be... One dumb fish to bite every piece of bait that floats in front of you. Well, after being trapped here for so long, even if you know it's a lie, you still gotta check, right? I suppose. They preyed on my desire to get out of here. They deceived me. I still don't buy it. Don't be mean. Well, you should buy it. Just a second. Okay, then show us that note. Thank you. Hmm. With pleasure. I have it right here in my, um, uh, pocket. Let me guess. You don't actually have it in your pocket. Guess that would be much too simple. No way. Uh, looks like I lost it. Uh. Yeah, sure. Please. Please. 
You gotta believe me. I wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must provide evidence. Can you show us the note? I have no particular issue with what you claim. But if you want us to believe you, give us a reason. Uh... What the heck? For serious? Yasahiro's account. So Yasahiro claims he was given a note that said to meet in the rec room and then was possibly drugged, stuffed into the costume, and stuffed into the pool locker. Okay. Now then, shall we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste before the class trial begins. Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it. That is just the sort of attitude that will get us all killed, Owie. What the heck? Why? Why did you kill them? Tell us, hero. Uh... No, it, it's like I said. Just the worst. Was it really to get the money Monokuma offered us? Yeah, that must be it. You must be totally broke, and that's why... Please! Wait, that's a false accusation. Someone, help me! What are you saying? Just be thankful we haven't bound and gagged you. Hmm. If you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for your evidence, right? What? What? Uh, oh, y yeah, you're right. I, I need to look for the second suit and that note. Yes, you do. Chop, chop. Feet don't fail me now. I guess I'd better get back to guard duty. I was going to ask Toko or Genocide Jack to switch with me. Hmm. But if she and Sakura got into a fight, we'd have a catastrophe on our hands. Well, bye. One by one, everyone peeled away. I guess I should have talked to Hiro last, because I didn't get a chance to speak to Kyoko. Makoto. But here she is, so... All's well. Makoto, do you have a second? Huh? I want you to help me with the investigation. Okay. It would seem... It looked like I got a late start on this one. So I need to make up some ground. And you need us to fill you in? Sure, I don't mind helping. But can you promise me something? Later, when we have time, will you tell me why you disappeared? Why is that? No. To reject me so simply. Anyway. I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Okay. Shall we go? Thanks. Then, shall we? Hey. So, Makoto, first I'd like to examine the corpses. Examine the corpses? I can't believe I'm hearing that from a girl the same age as me. And you further underestimate people all the time, don't you? Correct. Dead bodies don't lie, you know. They tell the truth far more easily than the living. I believe they probably could be manipulated to lie. Hey. Wouldn't you agree? To some extent. How am I supposed to answer? Anyway. We have to hurry. Before the class trial begins again. Y yeah, you're right. Okay then, show me where the bodies are. They're in the repository. Then I guess we should head back that way for now. We should, we should. Hifumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to go rigid. But only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. She crouched down next to Taka and without hesitation began poking and prodding the bodies. I knew it. The Monokuma file was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth, she was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. All right. Is that all? I see. Makoto, I found something. You did? Hey. You remember the wristwatch Taka always wore on his left hand? He did? Ooh. Are you so oblivious to the people around you 
Do you dislike other people that much? Well, I think it's possible to be oblivious and not to dislike people. Makoto's just clueless in general most of the time. No, that's not it. Anyway, so you said he had a watch? So then. Take a look. It's broken. Ooh, so. Um, looks like the time is a little after six. Like 603 or something like that. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? It most likely broke when he had his encounter with his assailant. So, we have a time of death for Taka, which is before everyone else's attacks. It's either 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. Either way, it's before Celeste claims she was attacked. And if you notice, the hands are frozen at just past 6 o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after 6? Would like to know whether that was AM or PM. That's right. But last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. Hey, you! How long are you going to keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced the air as he stared pointedly at his wristwatch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that? Bedtime for all the little boys and girls. So we know for certain that it wasn't 6 p.m. when it broke. It was 6 a.m. In other words... So, if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning it must have happened at 6 this morning. Broken wristwatch. However... And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. Ooh, he's got something. He appears to be gripping something. You're right, there's something white in there. Makoto. Can you try and pry it out? Me? Because... Rigor mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited to this kind of manual labor, right? I don't know about that, but I guess we'll give it a try. Okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice-cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. That's a little bit of hyperbole, don't you think, Makoto? After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper? Just a corner. Hey. Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrap of paper. Doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? I wonder. Is that right? Me too. Kyoko then turned to Hifumi's body. So then. Let's check Hifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left, the, left us a clue. <clears throat> Let's check Hifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us a clue, a few clues of his own. Okay. So the scrap of paper is important. The biggest problem I have right now is how the killer was able to move Hifumi's massive corpse from the nurse's office where he was discovered to hear the repository. I still conjecture that he moved himself, at least to the third floor somewhere. All the way from the first floor to the third and all without anyone noticing it. I just can't see how that's possible. Further, it seems that Hifumi died from a blow to the head. He was most likely killed using Justice Hammer 3, which we found in the nurse's office. But... When we found his body in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered in blood. But now they're spotless. Does that mean someone wiped his glasses clean? But who would do that and why? And why isn't it the first conclusion you draw that it was him? You know he was alive. <sighs> so. So, did you find anything? Indeed. I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper? Paper on both bodies. 
That's right. Hifumi had it hidden on him. Hidden? Indeed. He'd stuffed it in his pants. So I can only assume he'd hidden it on purpose, you see. Interesting. In his pants? Wait, so you... Why is that? It was just his pants. Not like his socks or something. I don't know what that means. Hey. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... It better be important, Hifumi, or I'll never forgive you for this. A note, and it has a corner missing. We should put these together and see if the corner is from this note. Not to mention the handwriting looks like the handwriting on the blueprints. I found a hole. Maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out. So don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. I thought when I first started reading this that this was Hero's note, but it's not. It's very similar. It's not asking him to meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. It's asking whoever it was given to to meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m., which is also just before the time that Taka's watch stopped. Things are starting to come together. Why did Hifumi have the note? So... That sounds very familiar, doesn't it, though? That's it? It's the same thing Hiro said. Well, very similar, not exactly the same. Then he was telling us the truth? However... Although, it's not exactly the same, is it? No. Um, last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. Yeah, there's slight differences. The time is different. Hiro told us that his note said to meet at 1 a.m. But the note they wrote to Hifumi asked him to meet at 6 a.m. But is the note to Hifumi or is the note to Taka? Because Taka has what appears to be the corner of this note. Is that right? Hold on. Just because Hifumi had the note doesn't mean it was meant for him. Huh? So... Part of it has been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning there. There's some meaning to part of it being ripped? Of course there is. Um, could you maybe explain it a little more? Think carefully. Hey. Why would he have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I have no idea. So then... What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? And how would something important like that become a mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. And oh my god, Hifumi killed Taka. That's the only explanation. Hifumi killed Taka and then tried to take the note from him. Unless Hifumi discovered the body earlier. I guess this is another option. Hifumi discovered Taka way, way before the rest of us did because there's only a body announcement when three people discover him. Though why he wouldn't tell us, I don't know. And took the note at that time. I think it's much more likely that he killed Taka. Then who killed Hifumi? My heart says Celeste, but it's not the heart that matters in these matters. Okay. Hey. And while we're at it, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them. Good to know. So the handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. Not that there was any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. So you're saying I don't have to think about the handbooks this time around, right? Is that right? If you don't have to think about them at all, or if you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. Okay? All I said was that they weren't used to help carry out the murders. There may come a point, however, 
where a handbook may play a role. Interesting. Can we see their handbooks? A handbook may play a role? I don't think I understand. But if Kyoko thinks it's important, I better keep it in mind. You very definitely better keep it in mind. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, that is the signal for the commencement of the trial. But that will have to begin in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like below. It really does help tremendously. And hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. I have been Tevron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other. Yeah.